The Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors. Woo! We are... We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Oh, glory to God. Glad you're here. And uh, I want you to turn with me into the book of 2 Samuel, the 21st chapter. And uh, I'm going to read a few verses of scripture here. Uh out of this chapter. <clears throat> Beginning at uh, verse 15. Notice what the Bible says. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. Philistines, they were uh, a group of giants. It was a giant nation. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines. And David waxed faint. He was... Uh, I think at this time, David was probably was about 60 years old. He's out there fighting giants. And uh, Ishbab Benob, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight. It weighed almost uh, 20 pounds. He girded and he being girded with a new sword thought to have slayed, slain David. But Abishal secured him. A friend of David, a servant of David. And smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David sweared unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. And the reason they said that, David got weak. He got faint, you know, in, in fighting. Verse 18 says, you remember the, the first verse of the Philistines made war? Verse 18 says, And it came to pass after this that there was war again, or there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then, I can't pronounce that name, but uh, he slew Seth. He was... Uh, was one of the sons of giants. And verse 19 says, And there was again a battle at Gob with the Philistines. And Elhanah, the Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Jittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Three battles, three wars. Verse 20 says, And there was yet a battle in Gath. Where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, twenty, a four and twenty in number, he also was born to the, to the giant. These, I believe, is uh, Goliath's sons. He was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, uh, 
that's uh, David's nephew slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath. They were born to Goliath. And they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Our Lord, we come before your throne this morning. We're asking blessings upon your word. We pray that your anointing would be upon your word, that you would bless every heart. And we pray, dear God, that you would touch every mind and every soul this morning. And if there's one lost, if there's just one lost here this morning or backslid, I pray that you would draw them by your spirit and give them the victory. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. I wanted to read uh, these scriptures this morning because we're having battles. We're having battles. And uh, I wanted to read about these giants. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the things that we face are giants. We have no power in ourselves to defeat these giants. But Jesus has already defeated them at Calvary and defeated those giants at Calvary. Uh, we read first about giants in Genesis 6 and verse 4. It says that there were giants in the earth in those days. It's a fact in history that there was giants, and it's a fact in the Bible that giants dwelled on the earth. Uh, the historian Josephus that lived during the days of Christ that wrote history uh, of those days. He spoke in his words that even at that time that he lived, that many of the bones of giants were still there. And uh, that the, the huge people, these giants were a product of fallen angels. When Satan, when Lucifer rose up in rebellion against God, the Bible tells us in Revelations about the great dragon that his tail drew a third of the stars, which are the angels. Uh, he drew a third of, of the angels to help him rebel against God Almighty. Uh, Lucifer was perfect in beauty. He was an angel also. He was perfect in beauty from the day that he was created until iniquity was found in him. And because of his beauty, and because that he, uh, he led the songs of the morning, every kind of instrument, every kind of music, when he opened his mouth, let me tell you, it was beautiful. It all just came out, and he got lifted up in his beauty, and he felt within himself, I'm going to be above God. I'm going to be above, uh, above the stars of God. I'm going to sit on the throne like the Most High. I'm going to be God. And when they rebelled against God, God cast them out. These angels that followed Satan. The Bible tells us in Genesis that these fallen angels that they saw the sons, sons of men. They saw uh, uh, people. And they took wives of all they chose. They saw that they were fair, and they took wives. Peter said that they left their habitation. They left their realm 
of habitation and came into the realm of humanity. And uh, they took wives and, uh, of course, when uh, they had children with women. And because of this, that they left their realm and, and did this, uh, giants were produced, men of great stature. Uh, they produce nations. And, uh, you know, uh, the reason that Satan and his angels did this is because in Genesis, the Lord said that the seed of the woman would bruise the heel of Satan. Talking about Jesus Christ down in the future was going to be come from the seed of a woman. And so Satan wanted to uh, uh, make a mixture of uh, uh, to pollute and corrupt the seed of man. And where that it would be part of Satan and part of human. The devil wanted to stop the birth of Jesus Christ. That's the reason God sent the flood. Some people says, well, how come in the flood that every man, every woman, even little children drowned? It was because there was a mixture of corrupt seed. And Jesus was going to be born not uh, with the corrupt seed of Satan. So God wanted to wipe out all of that seed. And the only true seed that he saw was uh, Noah and his family to preserve a seed that when Jesus Christ came on the scene many thousands of years later, that it would be, he would be able to defeat the devil. So let me tell you, uh, the purpose of the of of the flood was to destroy all that seed, and the purpose of giants was destroy, uh, prevent the birth of Jesus Christ, and uh, so uh, there was nations of giants. One nation called Amkins. The Bible says they were uh, people great and tall in body. The land of Ammon was a land of giants. Ammons were great and tall like the Amkins. One giant, the king of Bashan, Og, he had a bedstead that was 18 and one half feet long, made of iron. How would you like to have a big bed like that? <laughs> 18 and a half feet long, made of more. It was eight feet and four inches wide. Uh, the word giant comes from a word, a Hebrew word, which means giant, bully, or tyrant. Let, let me say this. I have never heard of so much cancer that I've heard in this past year. I believe it's a giant. I believe it's a bully. I believe it's, it's come to attack people, God's people, or whoever. So the word giant means uh, uh, bully or tyrant. And I want you to know we're still fighting giants. You're fighting giants this morning. There's giants that comes against us. And so <coughs> the, their giants in, in the Old Testament were physical. I mean, let me tell you, the one David fought against was 10 feet tall, close to tall as this ceiling close to it 10 feet tall uh, they were physical giants and they were described as huge 
and terrible to look at. Not only were they described as huge, huge and terrible to look at, but their sound was terrible. Their, their, their looks and their sound made fear to come upon people. This bully, that this giant that we're calling cancer, it tries to put fear and terror into people's hearts. But let me tell you, there's a God that's able to suppress all things and destroy all things. You remember these scriptures that I read to you, moreover the Philistines had yet war with Israel. Verse 15, that verse 18 says, It came to pass that after this there was again a battle with the Philistine at Gob. Verse 19 says, And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines. And verse 20 says there was yet a battle in Gath. Sometimes these battles, they're just coming one after another. But let me tell you, we're the church of the living God. And we believe that he's in control and that he has power and that he's able to do all things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me get one of these giants' names, if I can pronounce it. <clears throat> Verse 16, Ishbabanab. It, it means a man dwells on a mountain. He's prideful. He seems above and more powerful. This, this giant that was slain, his name meant that he feels like he's in control, that he can do everything, that he, he's up here and he's looking down, you puny little thing. There's no hope for you. There's no way. Look at me. I'm here. And... And I can, just, I can just do what I want to with you. I'm telling you, there's a God that can stop. The Bible says he can stop the mouths of lions. There's a God that can stop uh, everything that the enemy does. But this giant, he's up here saying, I can do anything I want to with you, and I will do anything I want to with you. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm here. You're there. <laughs> oh, my. But let me tell you, this giant... Though he was there, and David and his men down here, one of David's servants slew him. One of David's servants. Listen, I want to tell you, as the church here, we need to come together and battle these bullies that is fighting against God's people. Who am I, Brother David, that I could whip a giant? Let me tell you, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. <laughs> the Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors. Woo! We are... We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. <laughs> oh, glory to God. So... This one giant that was up there that uh, felt all powerful, he was slain by one of David's servants. Another giant in verse 18 is Saf, S A F. This, the, the commentary said this is a double faced giant. There's, a, there's giants we're fighting all the time. 
This giant was double face. Many people, this giant fights them, tells them, won't hurt to do this. God ain't gonna bother you. You can, you can live in sin. You can do this. But he's lying. He's a double face. He might, uh, like he did Eve, look at the tree. It looks good for food. Uh, God, uh, God knows that when you eat of it, your mind, your, your eyes are going to be open. And you'll be, you'll be like God. This giant deceives a lot and a lot of people saying, don't have to go to church. You're all right. Just serve God. Just do what, stay at home. Uh, forget about worship. It's a two-faced giant. I get my strength from living for God. I get courage and blessings and faith by listening to singing and getting in the atmosphere of worship and hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached. Faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? <laughs> oh, my, my. Verse 19 says, the brother of Goliath. And in another place, it gives his name, Lamy. And uh, actually, he's not Goliath's brother, but he, it just calls him that. But he's one of the sons of Goliath. Uh, he has... His spear is like a weaver's beam. He is a powerful, fierce, stubborn foe. The devil won't give up easily. It's a constant battle. But let me tell you something. You've got a sword. <laughs> There is no sword like this sword. It, it, it pierces, it cuts, cuts going and coming. Uh, the word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. I've got a sword. Somebody raise your sword up. Is that all the swords we got? <laughs> Woo, glory to God. I remember one time uh, my, my nephew Randy, he came here to preach a revival. And uh, he came over here to pray. And he said, he said, I can't believe all the Bibles left here. <laughs> but, you know, folks, folks got more Bibles. Some folks just leave some here, but they've got Bibles at home. I, I, I wouldn't know how many I've got. But this is the sword, the word of God. That's what Jesus used on the devil uh, when the devil tempted him. Every word in this is true and powerful. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your heart, in your mind. Get it to where that you believe it with all of your heart and that you can speak the word of God with all boldness. The Bible says, Jesus, when he came against the devil and the devil tempted him and Jesus said, it is written. It's written. <clears throat> so the brother of Goliath, his spear is like, the, like a weaver's beam, and he is a powerful, fierce, 
stubborn foe. Stubborn foe. Hallelujah. But Elhannah slew him. They can all be slewed by you. Verse 20 said that this giant had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. Now, there wasn't no shoes to fit him. I mean, his feet was big platforms. <laughs> Glory to God. He couldn't be knocked off his feet. I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, six toes on each feet. And he had six fingers on each hand. Each hand probably was... Uh, that big and he could grasp <laughs> and he could hold glory to God some folks says well I'm on drugs and I can't get free I, I drink alcohol and I can't get free I'm bound by this and I'm it's it's that bully it's that bully that's got six fingers on each hand that's grabbing a hold and said, you won't be let go. Woo! You won't be let go. <laughs> oh, my, my. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The devil, there's giants that has people bound in all kinds sorts of, of things, immoral things, lustful things. And it seems that they can't get free. He's got a grasp. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. I, let me tell you, he has a hold on people and Many times people just give in. But let me tell you something. <laughs> David's nephew slew him. Let's have a revival of drug addicts. Let's have a revival of homosexuality. Let's have a dr revival of, of a, a drunken people that's on alcohol and can't get free because that giant also got slain. It don't matter how many fingers he's got. Woo! It don't matter how hard I've got grasp he's got on people. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I'm telling you, there's a God that's able to destroy all these giants that we fight against. <laughs> I'm not going to give up. I'm just going to keep on a going because God is for me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If we don't conquer them, they will conquer us. <laughs> Sometimes it's fighting to get weary. Sometimes it's fighting, and David got faint fighting giants. We get faint. Sheila, we get faint fighting giants. But let me tell you, that don't mean that they can stay in control. That don't mean that they are there forever. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> so we've got to conquer them. Uh, 
And the only way to conquer them is by the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood brought healing. By his stripes, we're healed. Do you believe it? I believe it. By his stripes, I believe it. That giant might not want to let go. But I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. And the report of the Lord says I'm healed. Hallelujah. And we can conquer those giants by being a faithful follower of the captain of our salvation obeying his commands and depending on his might, his might, depending on his might. Listen to what the Bible says. The last verse. These four were born to the giant in Gath. Remember David when he went out to fight the giant, Goliath? The Bible says he went down to the brook and he picked up five smooth stones. I mean, it just took one for Goliath. But Goliath had four sons. Also, Pilgrim's Progress is a dream that was, I guess, written. It was a book that was written, and actually it was a dream that uh, God gave someone a dream. I think it was in the 1600s. And it was about the Christian life from the time he gets under conviction till he reaches heaven. In one portion of the Pilgrim's Progress, Christian and hopeful, they're tired when one evening it's getting late and they just laid down in this field to sleep. Very early the next morning, there's a, a big giant and he's standing there and he's a kicking them, waking them up. His name is Giant Despair. Don't let Giant Despair get you. And he took Christian and Hopeful and he locked them up in Doubting Castle. Oh my. And in Doubting Castle, every day he would come down to where he put them in the dungeon and he would beat them till they were almost close to death. And then he'd go home and eat breakfast. Every day he would go down there. He even took them out into a uh, brow of a hill and showed them bones everywhere and, and told them these were Christians just like you and look what I did to them and then he'd beat them some more and beat them some more and almost at the point of death and he would come home and he'd tell his wife they're still alive and she she uh told him, said, you finish them off this day. While Christian and hopeful, their, their bodies are beat so bad and they're sitting there in that dungeon, hopeful said, oh my, I think he said, what a fool I've been. He said, I've got in my bosom <laughs> I, I, I just realized I've got in my bosom a key. 
and the key was called promise. And that key will open every door to Doubting Castle. There's 32,000 promises right here. Just let it open every door that you're facing. <laughs> and they just pulled that key out and opened the door and ran for their lives. And when the king or when that giant came down and began to chase them, he got into a fit and started wallowing and flop flopping. And I'm telling you, <laughs> the devil can't stand defeat. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my, my, my. I'm just going to read just a little bit more here in the next chapter. You can read with me. I don't think I've got it on the, on the screen. Beginning at verse 1, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song, In the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my Savior that saveth me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. So shall I be saved from the giants. <laughs> When the waves of death come past me, the flood of the ungodly men made me afraid. That's what giants do. They try to make you afraid. When the waves of death come past me, the floods of the ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell come past me about. The snare of death prevented me. In my distress... I called unto the Lord and cried to my God, and he, and he did hear my voice out of the temple, and my cry did enter into his ear. Just keep calling out. Just keep declaring I'm healed. Just de keep declaring out I'm free. I'm set free. I'm delivered. The Bible says, Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the heavens moved and shook because of he was wroth. I'm telling you, God is not pleased with what these bullies are doing in our lives. <laughs> he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down. Darkness was under his feet, and he rode upon cherubim and did fly. And he was seen upon the wings of the wind. He made he made darkness he made darkness pavilions around about him, dark waters and thick clouds or sky of skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. He sent out our arrows and scattered them, lightnings and discomforted them. And the channels of the sea appeared, and the foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord. Oh my, how many knows that the Lord can rebuke? at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from above, he took me. Everybody say, he took me. He sent from above, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. Woo! He delivered me from 
from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. <laughs> Woo! They were too strong for me. <laughs> Glory to God. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Glory to God. The Lord rewarded me according to his righteousness, to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and done not wickedly departed and have not wickedly departed from my God, for all his judgments were before me. And as for his statues, I did not depart from them. I was also upright before him and have kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in my eyesight, in his eyesight. With the merciful thou shalt shew thyself merciful, and with the upright man thou shalt shew thyself upright. With the pure thou shalt shew thyself pure, and with the forward thou wilt shew thyself forward. And the afflicted people, and the afflicted people thou wilt save. I'm going to stop there. You could, you could read that whole chapter. But David sung this song after these giants was killed. And after Saul that tried to have him, uh, tried to kill him. There's going to always be a battle. Always going to be a battle. The devil is always going to be around. His emissaries is working all the time. But let me tell you something. When the devil took a third of the angels of heaven to rebel against him, that's probably millions and millions of angels. But he just took one third. We had two thirds. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my. No wonder the prophet said there's more on our side than on their side. Woo! Lest we must kill giants all the time. And they're nothing but bullies. Nothing but bullies. And nobody likes a bully. A bully can be whipped. Well, I ain't big as... That's what Goliath said to David. Look at you, you're just a little boy. <laughs> About 16 years old. And you come out against me. Uh, I, I've, I've got a sword and a shield and a spear and uh, my armor that I wear. Goliath's armor weighed 190 pounds. A hundred and. <laughs> I barely can. 30, 40 pounds, and I have a hard time. But that giant, 190 pounds, and you've come, uh, I've come against you. I, I defy the armies of the living God and uh, just cursing David. And David looks at him and says, 
You come against me with sword, spear, and shield, but I'm come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts of the armies that you have defied. And this day the Lord is going to give you into my hands. And all of the other giants he's going to give into my hands this day. And I'm going to take your head from you. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Oh, my. David was anointed. Those five stones, one for Goliath and four for his sons. And David just wrenched in his little shepherd's bag and pulled out one stone and put it in a sling. Oh my. The anointing is upon him. And he releases that. And the only place that the giant was not covered was between his eyes. And that stone hit the mark. Let me tell you, God will let the stone hit the mark. Just look to God. He can direct everything. And the stone sunk into his head and Goliath just fell back. David walks over to him and pulls out that giant sword. Make sure he's dead. <laughs> and David just chops off his head. Oh, my. And that sword of Goliath was put up. Oh, my. I'm seeing churches where, uh, you know, uh, uh, wheelchairs and uh, different things was hung on the wall where God intervened and brought healing and it was recognized. So let's battle. Let's keep battling. Let's not get weary. Just keep fighting on. Sometimes we have to help one another. We have to encourage one another. Sometimes we have to uh, lift one another up in prayers and uh, not forget about one another. <laughs> Every one of you is having battles. I know you are. There's battles, battles all the time. There's different types of battles. But there's no giant, no bully that God can't take care of. And I'm believing that God's going to take care of these giants that we're battling.